Hi, I'm Adam and thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to be looking at the Gigatron TTL computer. If you haven't already seen my unboxing video or my Gigatron build video, then I suggest you start with these. You'll find the links at the top of this video and in the description down below. What exactly is a TTL computer? To help answer this, I'm going to jump onto the Gigatron website, which you'll find at gigatron.io, and then head on over to the frequently asked questions section, and they've got the first question covered. So here they explain that a TTL computer is a computer where the components of the central processing unit, or CPU, are made out of individual TTL chips, instead of them all being integrated onto one single microprocessor chip. They also have this really great colour-coded picture showing all the various parts of the machine and what they do. We all take microprocessors for granted these days, hey, even my washing machine has a CPU and a touchscreen. But before the days of the CPU, mini computers were typically made from TTL chips and early arcade machines were designed in this way. Great, now we know what a TTL computer is and we know that the Gigatron is a TTL computer. So the next question is, what can we do with the Gigatron? So let's take a look at answering this by connecting the Gigatron up and powering it on. Looking at the rear of the Gigatron, moving from the left, the first socket is a 9-pin D-sub and has multiple functions. It can be used to connect a game controller or a PS2 keyboard when using the plug plug face adapter, and that's what I'm using here. It can also be used to load and save software using an Arduino. The next socket is a D-sub 15 VGA port and is used to connect to a standard VGA monitor. For this video, I'll be connecting it to an OSSC to convert the video to HDMI so that I can capture it. If you'd like to see more about the OSSC, I'll place a link at the top of this video now, as well as in the description down below. The next socket is an audio output and is a standard 3.5mm headphone jack. Just like the VGA, I'll also be connecting this to my OSSC so that I can route the audio over HDMI and capture it. Last but not least is the power connector. Now this is a mini USB connector, not micro USB and not USB-C. The Gigatron comes supplied with this cable. So let's power on the Gigatron and see what we can do. It boots to this menu screen with a choice of built-in software. Let's take a look at Snake. The original Snake-based arcade game Blockade released in 1976 was a little before my time, but anybody who had a Nokia mobile phone in the late 90s or early noughties will be familiar with this game. Where the idea is, you control a snake and you have to eat the food, avoid the poison and avoid looping around and eating yourself or crashing into the walls at the edge of the game. Pressing the page down button on my keyboard or select if you're using a game controller cycles through the retro line mode. There is more to this than just a cool retro look and feel. The Gigatron doesn't have hardware sprites or a dedicated graphics card. The video display is written to memory and then output to the VGA socket. By decreasing the amount that needs to be written to the display, it frees up processing time for, well, processing. And this is quite evident when running Racer. So let's start by loading this game. With the retro lines left to default, you can get a feel by watching for the speed of the gameplay. Now I'm going to remove the retro lines altogether and see how the game runs extremely slowly. To exit running software, reboot the Gigatron by pressing and holding the page up key on the keyboard or the start button if using the game controller. Mandelbrot draws a Mandelbrot fractal, but it can take a long time to do this due to the limited power of the machine. I'll let this run for an hour and speed it up in post.
Pictures shows off the Gigatron's display capability. Credits is pretty self-explanatory, but thanks to everyone on here for a great product that was fun to build. Loader. Now this is an interesting one. When using the Plug in Plug Face adapter, you can set the keyboard layout by running Loader and then pressing Control Alt F1 for a US keyboard, F2 for the UK, F3 for Germany, F4 for France, F5 for Italy, and F6 for a Spanish layout. The selection is then stored in the plug in plug face adapter so you'll only need to do this once. It's also possible to load and save software over the 9-pin D sub interface using an Arduino. There's a link to how to do this in the description down below. Tetronis is a Tetris clone complete with Game Boy inspired theme music. I found the controls to rotate a little counterintuitive since you need to press the up button on the controller or up arrow on the keyboard to rotate the shape. But once I got used to it, it was a really enjoyable version of Tetris. Bricks is another typical old school game. One thing I noted was that I found the gameplay a lot easier when using the PS2 keyboard. Tic-Tac-Toe is a text-based implementation of the game and the board is redrawn after each play. The Gigatron does take quite some time calculating its next move. Basic, well, that's what we all came here for really, isn't it? The home computers of yesteryear all booted straight to their basic screen. Tiny Basic version 3, 9,504 bytes free. So a little over nine kilobytes to play with. Wow, what am I going to do with all this memory? Let's start by making things a little easier to read. Poke 42, 0 will set the background to black and Poke 43, 12 will set the foreground to green. CLS will clear the screen. Now that's easier to read and feels a little more old school. We can directly control the blinken lights. I can stop the blinking lights with poke 46 comma 1 and then directly turn each LED on or off depending on the value I set with poke 20. There are four LEDs so in binary I will have a range between 0 with them all off and 15 which is them all on. Let's turn the rightmost LED on. To do this I will use the command poke 20 comma 1. Now let's turn the leftmost LED on. To do this, I will use the command poke 20, 8. Okay, so now if we want to turn both the left and right LEDs on, it's in binary, so we know that the leftmost LED is 8 and the rightmost LED is 1, so I need to poke 20, 9. And finally, to turn all the LEDs on, I need to write the value 15 to the port so in this case, I'm going to poke 20, 15. And let's start the blink and light sequence again by typing in poke 46, 0. Okay, let's clear the screen with CLS. And now I'm going to type in a quick basic program and I'll speed up the typing in post and we can look at the output.
break out of a running program with Control C. And that was BASIC on the Gigatron. Let's look at WASMON. WASMON is a recreation of the WASMON ROM monitor program on the Apple I, written by Steve Wozniak. It can be used to read and write to memory locations, so for example, if I enter 2A, I get back the contents at this memory location. So that's some of the things you can do with the Gigatron, although I've not tried saving and loading data using an Arduino yet. This is something I'd very much like to try at some point in the future. If you can't wait to get your hands on a Gigatron, then you can try the emulator on their site at gigatron.io forward slash emu. I want to point out that all Gigatron video and audio in this video was captured using my actual Gigatron and not the online emulator. There's something special about looking at the little wooden box whilst you're typing on the keyboard attached to it and seeing the words appearing on a screen and looking at those blinking lights all the time knowing that this is being carried out by a handful of discrete 7400 series ICs with no CPU.